Over the last decade, there's been a massive uprising in women's football. This is reflected through the media, the culture and the statistics. But who is responsible for supporting this? What's it like for the next generations? Aston, I support Aston Villa. Yeah, I've been playing football for a year. Yeah, so I started off at school for football and I played for the school team. I didn't really like football in year five, but then I played MP, I played against another team and then I actually started to really enjoy it. And then in year six, I joined the girls club and then I got selected to play for the team. Uh, first noticed that she was into football. She always liked sports, so she's always like liked to run around and kick a ball around or throw things around. Um, but probably when she went and had trials to go to into the football club at school in year six, and then just really kind of got into it from then. And then in year seven, there's not been a team yet. But I used to play for Oasis Oasis Academy, but there weren't many girls there, and I wasn't really getting passed to. Um, so I moved to an all-girls team at the Three Cs. We popped her into Oasis Lionhearts just as because it was down the road and nice and simple. Um, it didn't really work out for her, but one of her friends that she played with at primary school um, plays for a team uh, and contacts and said, come along, and so she did. So now her and one of her best friends and another one of her friends are all playing there and really enjoying it. So it was a mixed team. But there were only two girls in it, and then all my friends joined but then they left, so it was just me, and in like a 20 minute game, I might get past two once, but like, even if I had space, the boys weren't really passing to me, which I found quite annoying. And I definitely feel like I'm getting more opportunities, as in being passed to and like being able to score goals in that team that I was in Oasis, and I'm enjoying it more there. I'm going from a mixed team to an all girls team, it's strange because I'm getting passed to a lot more, and I'm, as I said, I'm getting more opportunities to like, I'm getting the ball, like people are passing to me and I'm able to score goals as well. She's moved on from year six uh, and in year seven hopefully she will be in the year seven and eight football team but there's not as many opportunities at the moment at a secondary school as there was at a primary school. I try and practice in the garden with my brother and then I'll like play on Tuesdays as well. It's quite competitive, like the matches are quite competitive, but like when you're just training, like it's like it's quite friendly. All the people like they encourage you, like the coaches, they really encourage you to try and like keep going, even if you like made a mistake. A lot of my friends like they played and then there were quite a lot of year five girls who played as well. But when like we went in to try and see if we could get into the team. There were a lot of girls who wanted to get in. I think there are a few less girls playing in, our, in year seven than there were in year six, and definitely less girls wanting to get in. So Esther got a lot better really quickly over like a few months. And I think one of the reasons was she had um, a female coach at school, um, part of a sports coaching project. Um, who's a good footballer herself, so, which was coached by um, a female and then it was an all-girls team and she got really good really quick. Um, t to the point where I would like go and watch her and be like, how did she get that good? <laughs> right, and I was like, oh, she's really good. I love football, um, but I wouldn't say I got them into it. I think that's all down to uh, primary school. I do play with them kind of like out on the field and stuff, but it's mainly school that they've really developed their skills. 
at primary school, went to watch you most of your tournaments, didn't I? If I couldn't get there to the start, I'd get there near the end. There's probably only one I didn't go and watch you in, because um, there was after school, so that was really good. And then um, I watched some of your training sessions, not all of them, because I don't have to and I've got other things to do sometimes, but um, I usually try and watch um, the last 20 minutes when you're playing a match. Um, I kind of always imagined probably, like when they were little, of me being like able to like you know go and play football all the time with them and and I do play football with them but actually you realise that I, I don't have any coaching qualifications or anything like that so when we play it's more like it's like a kickabout and just having fun whereas like when she's getting coaching like she's learning how to do it properly and technique and all of that kind of stuff and she, she picked up the simple things really well um, but the biggest thing for her was getting confidence like she, She's not a massively confident um, individual, wasn't like a couple of years ago, but her last two years of primary school and then into year seven, like part of the reason she's confident as she is is because, you know, she's excelled in things like football um, and other things like music and, and stuff like that, but it's given her self-belief and confidence and um, that's down to like good coaching and people encouraging her. I'm uh, Chris Evans, um, I'm manager of Wolverley under 13's girls football team, um, we've been doing this since the girls were under 8, so for a number of years, uh, UA for B coach, um, and I run the team with my co-coach Beth and also Alan, and we play in the um, Mercian League, which is a Worcestershire League. Okay, so today um, we're specifically looking at our formation is a diamond um, midfield, four diamond midfielders, uh, a defensive midfielder, uh, a left midfielder, a right midfielder and attacking midfielder. So this session is particularly focusing on those four working together um, and keeping the passing nice and tight and keeping moving and then when the, when the play re, uh, breaks down, resetting those positions. So that's what we're doing here. And over there we've got uh, one of our goalkeepers who's working with Alan, our goalkeeper coach, and um, they're doing distribution, so receiving the ball and then distributing it out. I'm Alan, I'm the under-13 Wolverley Swans goalkeeper coach. We have two goalkeepers in the squad and I'm trying to help them by sharing the knowledge I've got from when I used to play in goal. Um, and it's great fun. They're really coming along brilliantly. Goalkeepers we've got here are really good. We've got um, one who's quite a short girl, which is, has been a challenge for a goalkeeper, but she's developed the ability to leap very well. So she's very agile. And the other girl's a bit taller, but she's very, very solid too. Um, and they're both excellent because they're prepared to question what they're being asked to do and so they can understand why they're doing it. Today we've been focusing on distributing the ball. So the keeper that we were working with um, sometimes panics when she has the ball and doesn't know whether to kick it or to throw it. So we've been working on slowing the picture down, calming her down and giving her some better options to become secure with. She's improved a lot tonight. She's got a game, we've got both, both our keepers play half a game each every week. I mean, the way our team runs, we, if a girl wants to come and play for us, if, as long as we've got space, they can come and play. We don't do trials, so um, we accept all abilities and then we train them up and, and coach them up to be a, a good standard. Um, we've never turned a player away. We've never had a player come to train and say, oh, you're not good enough. Um, that's just not how we do it. Um, and we started at under eights and we've still got I think five or six of the girls that started with us back then so um, 
as a team we tend to retain our players quite well. So last season we were, previously we were playing for a different club, but last season we were promoted as champions, so um, we were in the Mercian League, uh, which is the Worcestershire League. Um, we won the league um, last season, so we got promoted to the First Division, which is where we are now. Um, and they're doing okay this season. Not Last season we were doing very well every week, this season it's a bit more of a challenge for them, but that's not, not a bad thing. I've got two girls. Um, they wanted to get into football and there was no coaches um, so we, we started with a, a club they needed a coach and they put me through so the club then put me through the um, qualifications so I did my FA level one um, and now I've done my level two as well so it's new way for B so the, the next level up and it went from there and I've been loving it since good go on Maya go on Maya right there oh. We could find clubs, but the problem is the coaches. So there's lots of clubs and there's lots of players, but it's somebody having that, um, somebody who's prepared to stand up and say, I'll coach the team or I'll manage the team. That's where there's a lack. So um, it's just having a parent or anyone that's interested being brave enough to stand up and say, I'll, I'll take it on, which it's a big commitment. Um, it takes up a lot of my time, but it's uh, very rewarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poppy's there. Poppy's there. I'm Emily Withers, I'm 40 years old um, and I live from Tembury. I live in Tembury. Um, I'm a local when it comes to the football club. Um, we started up um, just before Covid hit. Um, the club is already established, so the club is already Tembury United Youth. Um, it had boys playing from the age of five upwards up to men's and um, we were obviously missing the girls section. I have a daughter myself. So I decided that Tembury needed to have something for these girls to be able to play. And uh, me and another coach got together and we were just sort of like, is there any possibility that we could join Tembury United Youth Boys um, and sort of start a girls section to it? Um, and ever since, I mean, the team that we've just been watching or I coach is the first team to ever play out of Tembury United when they were under eight. Uh, they started and um, the journey's just gone bigger and bigger and bigger for the club. We now have girls from the age of five to under 14s playing. So we have Amelia, Keegan, Riley, Grace. Come on over and watch this work for me. So how long have you guys been playing here? A long time. A long time. Probably like, I don't know, four years? I don't know. Four no, years? I've played here about a year. Yeah, two or three. Two or three years. Yeah, and who's the youngest here? Me. <laughs> From a shielding point of view, yeah. What I'd like us to be able to do is be able to turn the ball and make that a hand pass. She's shielding the ball. Tegan needs to run around the square. We're not the best well. at the minute. Uh, yeah. We're getting 
We've got good teamwork. Yeah. We have got good teamwork, haven't we? Yeah. What, what, what league are we playing in? Hereford West. Isn't it? We're Hereford. playing in the Hereford League. Yeah, where yeah. did we play last season? What was the league we played in last season? Mercy. In the Mercian Mercy. League. Yeah, so we've changed leagues. You've gone up higher. Yeah, we've gone a bit higher, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. so we're doing really yeah. well. We're through to uh, we're through to the next stage of the cup. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is really good. So you're having a really good season, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Who's shielding? You choose. Who's shielding? No nice and high because she needs to control it. I'm happy to play. Yeah. Let her get the ball first. Go. Right, so she's shielding it now. That's it. Shield it, shield it, shield it. Four. Keep it in the square, keep it in the square. The club's just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's really amazing to see all these girls are so involved in, fo in football. Um, and I currently work at Tenbury High School um, as a cover supervisor. And um, yeah, I've been playing or training or coaching football for about four seasons now. Know what shoulder she's on, know what shoulder she's on, person, good girl. Working in a school, um, it's actually really helped socially as well. Um, it's helped with um, transition from primary to secondary school. So a lot of the girls that you would have seen tonight, the girls that come on for my team, are girls that have come from primary school and already know all the girls that are in high school purely from football. Um, they've made amazing friends and it's something I'm really proud of. Um, my daughter plays, my sons play for the boys. Um, it's a real family environment. Um, and you know what it, it's amazing the lionesses are a massive thing at the moment and i've got a lot of girls that really want to drive their their future through football so it's really good really exciting I think it's great that, you know, Miss Withers, Emily Withers, has um, made a girls team and they're like really big in Tenbury now, which is, I think is really good, gives loads of the girls good opportunities and it's just nice to see girls playing football. How often do we train? Um, once a week, but that once a week is um, like quite a lot and it gives us like what we need to do in our games to improve. Every Thursday we train. Um, some of our girls um, also play for other teams as well. We like to encourage the girls to go into development squads um, to further their game um, and further them as, as players, not just on the pitch but off the pitch as well. I think it's really, really important that we get um, the girls not just playing with the same girls every week, um, but having the diversity of playing with different players of different levels and they're fairly new programs that have just been brought on so it's a really exciting time for the girls to be playing football. Pass. Oh. 
We've done two touch pass. We've done shielding. We've got moving the ball forward. Okay. Oh, All over the is. Can I have a volunteer? No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Big one, a really big, come on Pembrey, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. Come on Pembrey! Yeah, so we've, uh, obviously it's, what, going into November time now, so we need to protect our pitches, which is the way we normally train. Um, and it's getting dark, obviously, so that's why we've moved to this indoor uh, venue for the first time. <laughs> Just play a little bit different football as well, more of a futsal type, fast paced, kind of small area um, game. But then we will be moving back to our winter training venue, which is like an Astro um, pitch from next week. So that's good. We've got a game against one of our local rivals from Kidderminster. And uh, it's going to be a tough game for all of us, I think, even though it's on the sideline. I'm uh, Grace Nascimento, and um, I'm 17 years old, and I play for Aston Villa um, Women's Under 21s Academy. So I started at grassroots with the boys, um, Tenbury United. And then uh, when I was 12 or 13, 
I went to trial for West Brom and uh, I got in. And then I played West Brom for maybe like two or three, three seasons. And then um, I left to join Villa and I've been there ever since. Oh yeah, so when I was at West Brom, I got scouted for England and then I've played for England since under 14s all the way to now until I got injured. But yeah, when you're younger, when I was younger, obviously because girls football wasn't as big, the opportunities were like slimmer. So like I had to play with boys. There was no like girls grassroots teams around here or anything where I live. So it was a lot harder. But then in terms of, I think, I guess in terms of women's football and you know men's football, men's is a lot higher and a lot more competitive. So I guess it was easier in a sense. I always loved playing football. Like my dad got me into it. So I loved playing football since I was like a kid. And like, I guess, as I got older, it kind of got more serious and I was like, oh, okay, I want to be, I want to be a professional footballer. Grace is a, a huge role model to these girls. Um, we were really lucky that when Grace um, was uh, Aston Villa, I think, I, she still is at Aston Villa, she um, came and did a coaching session with the girls. Um, she just came down to the Palmers. She was really involved with them all. She was doing uppies, kicky uppies with them. Um, she did some refing for them. and. She's a really great model, role model and, she, and she's proof that you can do it. If you put your mind to it and you work hard, you can get there. And I think that it's incredible for these girls to grow up in an environment in, in a community where you have someone that is so successful like Grace. Um, Grace wasn't just incredible on the pitch, she's an amazing person. And um, she would take any time out to help um, younger children to develop her game because she's been there and her path was a lot different she didn't have the exposure as much with the girls playing football she played a lot with the boys um, and so her journey is a lot different to the girls that are coming up now but she's just yeah i'm in awe of her i think her success is incredible i think she's an incredible player so i was playing for england against usa in back in february and um i literally come on for like I was on the pitch for about five minutes and um, me and this girl we were like sp we were sprinting to get the obviously get the ball and we both like kicked the ball at the same time and I can remember just like feeling and hearing like a pop and a crunch I can remember thinking like I've, like, I've done something here and then um, yeah I can just remember like people rushing over and stuff and yeah it was yeah it wasn't very good I uh, did my ACL, my MCL, my LCL and my meniscus. This is like the first time I've had like a big, big injury. So I'll be out for like, well, the recovery time is 12 months, but I'll be out longer because I've got to have another op like next week. When I did it, my first thought was like, am I going to be able to play again? Because like, when I, and then when they told me how bad it was, I was like, this is like, you know, quite significant. So. It's like always scary, but even before I did it, like, and I know a lot of people from my team, like they say the same thing where like, you you step onto the pitch and like, because this injury is so like common in women's football now, it's like happening all the time. It's like, once you step on the pitch, you're kind of in the back of your mind, you're always like worried about it and scared like, oh, is it, is it gonna be me today? But yeah, so it's the first time, yeah. You have to think of the positives of it. Do you know what I mean? So I can focus now more on school than I did when I was playing football because I've got more time to, you know, focus on it. And I guess like surrounding myself with like family and friends, you kind of like um, helps you like forget sometimes, which is which is good. But sometimes you do need to like think about it and like kind of go through it if you know what I mean. We have our own. Uh, we have our so a psychologist so. I have chats with him maybe like once every couple, once every month maybe, once every couple of weeks and like that helps a lot because you know you need to talk to people when you're going through something like that because it is like a traumatic experience to like be took away from like the thing like you're used to doing every single day so yeah they've supported me really well. I kind of think about it like it is what it is, I can't go back and change it so I'm, I've got to you know keep going and stuff so 
like rehab's long, but like um, it'll be worth it in the end, like once I get back on pitch. <laughs> I think obviously I want to further on my education as well as football so I'm still deciding what I want to do but I think probably I'll obviously pursue another career in something else other than football but I don't know what yet. Uh, it's 1-0 at the moment, unfortunately, um, but overall, well, it's, I think it should be a draw at the moment. I think we've got the majority of the possession. We told them at half-time, I think, um, definitely got goals in us, so just need to get that equaliser as early as we can. Yeah, back, the back goes back to the middle of the pitch. We've just given them a bit too much time. So midfielders, if you're a midfielder in the second half, let's win the ball a bit quicker in that middle of the pitch. Yeah. Listen, carry on doing that sort of thing. Passing, moving, through balls. Balls out through to Pat and Danny. Um, just working really hard, but just give us that little bit extra. That we should be able to do anyway because the pitch is a bit better. Maya, Maya, when you're winning with that ball, just have a look a little bit earlier. See if you can do something a little bit earlier. Sometimes they're just, they're just snubbing us out. All right. So if you get our head up, see if there's a pass, see if there's a shot. Um, okay, right, there's the, there's the team girl. So starting with the sub, Ava, Ava. I mean, football's like a team game and it's helped a lot with like almost like making friends and being um, part of the community and like it opens up a lot of opportunities for me outside of football as well as inside.
We should have been in, you know, we could have easily won that game. Easily won that game. But it was hard work. We said, what did we say before the match? It was going to be hard work. And we needed that extra 10%. And, and I think, to be, listen, that? I think you did give us that 10%, right? 10%. It was just, it was a good match. Um, final score, we lost 2 1. Um, I think if we'd have got that our goal a little bit earlier in the second half, I think it would have been, yeah, a bit different. So it's a little bit frustrating, but I think it was a good match. They were, they're a good team, the opposition. We didn't play badly at all. So it was a it was a good match. There was a lot of niggly stuff going on, a little bit of um, little bit of niggly fouls and things like that, but nothing too bad. Um, it was just a close match. Just a bit unfortunate. I mean, I don't know if you caught at the end, some of the girls were a little bit sad and some almost upset and we try and Obviously, it's difficult because they want to win, but we don't. We're not the sort of team that just goes out to win at all all costs. Um, so it's finding the balance of getting them playing football, good football, but not going out to win at all costs. Um, but obviously, like I say, they want to win, and they're upset when they don't win, especially when it's so close. I think I would try and bring football into, into my future because I really enjoy it. I think it's like a really good sport and I really love sports. That's one of the reasons we moved to the club we're at now, Wolverley FC. So they've got um, plans for a women's team. So there'll be a pathway all the way up to a women's team as of next season or the season after. Hopefully um, they'll progress onto the older age groups. Um, and yeah, in the next couple of years here at uh, Wolverley we'll have a, an open age women's team. So. Um, they'll be able to go on to play for as long as they like. The football journey doesn't just stop. Um, the football journey can continue into ladies football. Um, there are lots of different clubs around and I'm hoping that we will, as we are growing, grow with them as well. Um, but as a coach, I'm opening doors to them to be able to do that as well. I guess as you go, as, as you go through the age groups, it gets more... Um, it gets tougher and more competitive and um, obviously now that I'm in the 21s especially like you want to break through to first team so this is like the hardest it's going to get and then um, but I think as well now that women's football's getting bigger especially on like you know TV and stuff like that the pressure's like getting even even more and like the chances and opportunities are slimmer now and probably will get slimmer and slimmer as time goes on but yeah.